Hello and welcome to Telescript's how-to video for our motorized public speaking systems. We're going to show you how to set up and operate this unique system and even show you how to troubleshoot your units if you have an issue with them not behaving as anticipated. So let's get started. Now when you receive your MPS kit, you'll find two MPS bases, one XLR cable, one MPS controller with a power supply, two power cords, two beam splitters, and two trifold surrounds. If you also receive the custom case for these units, you'll notice that everything has a place to be stored for protection and organization. If you ordered monitors with your system, you receive two monitors in the size requested, two power supplies, along with the mounting screws. A custom case for these monitors is also available. As you can see on the left side of the unit, you'll find all the data inputs and ports. You have a network data input and output port, an XLR power output port that enables you to power a monitor with an XLR power cable, electrical fuses, a pole identity button, and a send to home button. We'll get into the functionality of all these in this video. On the front of the unit, there is a display panel as well as a local control port. On the right side of the unit, you'll find a clutch bolt and an access hole to adjust your home position. We will also talk about this in the troubleshooting section of this video. The setup process is pretty easy. Place your poles on the floor at the distance you need for the speaker. Take a BNC cable and connect one end to the controller and the other end to one of the network ports on your first pole. Now take another BNC and plug it into the other network port on the first pole and plug the other end into the network port on the second base. You can chain up to 15 poles all working off the same controller if required. Now place your beam splitters in the beam splitter clamps. Loosen the two thumb screws under the clamp and then slide your glass into the mouth until it's all the way in. Then tighten the thumb screws to secure the glass. Power both the units and the controller and you will see the controller and the comms light on the side of the units come to life. As the controller searches for all the connected poles, you will see the comms light blink. Once the controller has identified all of the poles connected, it will indicate how many poles are connected and what their identification number is. On the front display of the unit, you will see the unit indicate what its pole identity number is. Be sure every pole in the chain has a unique number assigned to it. If you have two units that have the same number, simply press the pull ident button to assign it a unique number. Now that the controller sees the poles that are connected, it's time to send them up. Your controller has 15 pre-programmed heights. Preset 1 is the lowest position a unit can go with the glass in the unfolded position. Home is the lowest position with the glass in the folded position. The home position is the position you should always have your pole in before you pack them up. Pressing any of the preset heights other than one and home will send the units up. All heights between presets two and 15 are programmed in increments of one inch. These heights should accommodate most speakers between five feet and six foot five with the glass fully unfolded. If you need to adjust the angle of the glass, Use the adjusting knob that is located just under the glass clamp mouth. The more you turn it one way or the other, the steeper the angle will go in either direction. Telescript's MPS units can go as high as 82 inches and as low as 22 inches. So if you have a speaker that needs the glass to be outside of the unit's preset locations, you can custom program one of the height locations for that speaker. First, press the I key and the number of the first pole. In my case, it's one. Now you can either use the arrow up or down keys to set the height required by pressing and holding the arrow until it reaches the desired height. Or you can program a specific height in inches. To do that, hit the I key three times. Then type in the height in inches that you want. Then hit the enter key, which is the key with the bent arrow. The pole will now travel to the height you just typed in. To save this height, Press the X key to exit the height entry screen. 
Then press and hold the preset location you want to save the height. You'll notice as you press the key, the controller will say release to move and hold to store. Continue holding until the programming is complete. Now, press the I and then the C key to exit single pole control mode. Press C for copy, and the controller will now ask for the source pole that you're copying from. Again, in my case, it's one. The controller will now ask what the destination pole number is. Since my poles are numbered one and two, I'm copying from one and pasting it to two, so I'm going to select two. Finally, the controller will ask what preset location you want to program for that pole. Select the same preset location as you did for the first pole. The programming is now complete. These presets are stored inside the units themselves, not the controller, and the heights will remain in effect until you reset the units. Now, if your poles are located away from where you're operating from, and you need to be at the poles with your speaker to set a programmed height, you can use the provided XLR cable and plug it into the local port on the front of the unit. You will have all the same controls you had before, but you can only control the pole that you're plugged into at that time. You can copy a preset height by going back and reconnecting the BNC data cable, or you can plug into the other pole and program that one the same way you did the first one. No copying required using this method. Now, if you need to reset your pole, you first have to unplug the power and then hold the pole ident and send to home buttons simultaneously as you plug the unit back in. Continue to hold these buttons until you see the front display say retracting. You can now release these buttons. Eventually the pole will display a target and result number. The target number will always be 86. The result number should be within one in either direction. If your result number says something other than 85, 86, or 87, you should readjust your home position. To do that, get a small flathead screwdriver and insert it into the access hole on the right side of the unit. Inside that access hole, you will see a small flathead screw. Use the screwdriver to turn that screw slightly in one direction or the other until you get it to 86. This recalibrates the pole's home position and oftentimes can remedy issues with the glass folding flat or preset heights not hitting their preset marks. If you are in the field and your poles become physically stuck, try running through the reset steps once or twice to see if the unit will pull the glass to the home position. If this fails, try snugging up the clutch bolt on the right side of the unit. You will need a 5mm Allen wrench to do this. If the clutch is loose, it may not have the ability to fully pull the pole down and the glass into the folding position. If you still cannot get the pole to move, you can manually adjust the poles in an emergency. To do that, loosen the clutch bolt so it is fully loose. Then, gently move the pole up or down from the very top until it's in the position you need. Then lock down the clutch bolt to hold the position. Be sure to never force the poles upward or downward, as you could damage the internal components. If you need to pack a unit that's stuck, loosen the clutch bolt, remove the glass, then gently slide the pole all the way down to the bottom position, again, not forcing the unit downward, and then lock the clutch bolt. If the head is in an open position, keep the clutch bolt loose, and put some pressure on the head and turn the adjusting knob until it keeps the glass clamp flat. Then retighten the clutch and pack the unit. If you've gotten to this point, please get in touch with us so we can schedule your unit for repair. Other issues that may arise may include your controller not communicating with your bases. This could be the result of a bad BNC cable, a bad BNC barrel if you're connecting multiple cables together, or if you're connecting to a routing system. These units cannot be controlled if your data cable is run through any type of signal distribution system. The units do require two-way communication with the controller, and generally signal distribution systems do not allow for this, so the cables must be connected directly to the units with nothing in between. Finally, the monitor mounting plate on the unit accepts monitors with 75mm and 100mm visa holes. 
If you have a telescript monitor, take the thumb screws and thread them into either the 75 or 100 millimeter holes a turn or two. Then place the monitor on the plate, inserting the thumb screws into the corresponding keyholes on the plate. Slide the monitor back and hand tighten the screws. If you have a male to female 4-pin XLR power cable, you can use the XLR power port on the side of the basis to power your monitor instead of using a separate power supply for the monitors. And that pretty much covers all of the setup and operation of these units. If you have any specific questions, uh, please give us a call at 201-767-6733 or you can email us at info at Thanks for watching.